My name is Lori Gordon, and I'm a filmmaker from Montreal, Canada. I'm the only one alive on my father's side. His family was killed in 1941 in the first massacre by the Nazis. I never met my father. He died when I was 14 months old. I've learned about my dad from stories my mother told me, my aunt, my sister, and Google. I don't remember anything about my father. But I grew up with photographs, a few stills, newspaper articles, and when I was 25, I first saw the Eichmann trial testimony where his voice is recorded. When I was growing up, I saw my father as a superhero. I heard about his stories, his travels to the Congo, and what a nice man he was. As I got older, I assumed that those were just nice things that people said. I started to think about my father differently when the CBC came calling looking to interview him for a documentary on Adolf Eichmann. But my father had died a long time ago, and so they showed me the footage where they wanted to, and they presented it to us. And it's the only place where I have his voice recorded. No, he looks much better, much better than he should look. No, 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 please, Mr. Gordon. It's the first realization that maybe my father was more than a superhero, <laughs> that maybe he was um, someone special who lived in extraordinary times and had something very important he needed to share with the rest of the world. I mentioned to a friend a trip that my father had taken to the Congo when he immediately responded, your father was a spy. I found that extremely strange. Then I flashed on some photos that I had put into a photo album when I was about nine years old, and I went back to my house where my mom still lives, and I took them out of the photo album that I put together so long ago. I took them out and flipped them over and on the back of each image was my father's handwriting identifying every single delegate, politician of the government that came in after Lumumba was assassinated. I was always going to make a film on my father, but I never knew that it was going to become a spy thriller. And the more I dug, the more I found, and the more questions I had, and still have. So now I plan on following my own instincts, researching, investigating, looking through archives, asking questions. A lot of these, especially that era in the Congo, is still classified. I grew up thinking that my father was a real estate agent. Learning more, I found out that he was a boxer, a reporter for the Toronto Star, the translator for Canada's immigration minister. He was a he was a businessman. I Spy My Father is an investigation into the mystery of whether or not my father was a spy involved in the Congo crisis. Was he involved? I have no idea. I have no idea.